Welcome to FT Markets. Economic forecasters have had a bit of a bad run in the last couple of months. The US and the UK came in with disappointing first quarter growth, and the Eurozone has overtaken the US in terms of growth. Very few people expected that to happen a few months back. But some did, and I have with me in the studio today Jasper McMahon, who's the chief executive of Nowcasting.com, to talk about an alternative technique for understanding what's going on in the economy. Jesper, your company does something called Nowcasting. Can you tell us what is Nowcasting and how is it different from normal forecasting? Nowcasting is a technique entirely automated which uses a, a type of statistical model which is, if you like, a kind of economics version of big data, taking in large quantities of um, contemporaneous data series and attempting to infer from them the current state of the economy. So it's trying to look through the noise in real time to see what's happening right now. Exactly. Hence the name Nowcast. Hence the I name suppose. Nowcasting. So we forecast the present and the very near future. Right. Let's see how well you do. We have a, first a chart that compares your Nowcasts of the Eurozone and the US's first quarter growth. Um, and we've also put in some of the uh, more conventional forecasts. Now what these lines show is at every date up to April, what you said at that point first quarter growth would be. Um, the blue line is the Eurozone, the red line is the US, and these bars here I've put in two uh, consensus independent forecasts, conventional forecasts, as well as the official estimate for the US uh, at the end of April. Um, and it's very interesting what we see here because we started out with what everyone thought, the US growing fast, the Eurozone's growing slowly. That's what people kept expecting. But you found somewhere, I guess this is late February, early March, a crossover. Can you tell us what was driving this result? What happened in the US in Q1 is typical of what we often see, is that early in the quarter, the data, data releases that make the most difference are in fact what we call soft data. They're typically surveys. Surveys. So mm -hmm. The ISM, the Institute of Supply Management, Purchasing Managers Indices in the U.S., also uh, a number of the Federal Reserve Bank surveys, the Philadelphia Fed, in fact, right at the beginning in January, that, that is, um, or mid-January, I should say, is the first uh, information we get that's actually uh, been based on data gathered in January. So it's the first glimpse of what's actually going on in the current quarter. So as you then go on through that period of three to four months, um, some of the later downward revisions or downward um, updates, if you like, are due to hard data. So we particularly mm -hmm. saw retail sales coming through again and again with negative surprises for the model. One thing. So, so that's that's the difference between the uh, conventional forecast that didn't pick up any slowdown with your downward line here. Yes, I mean the general point I would make is that. What the academic research into these models proves is that it is worthwhile updating your forecast every time you find a new release because at the margin, every data release has some information in it. The challenge is to extract the signal and filter out the noise, and that's what this model does. Typically, judgmental forecasters faced with this sort of wall of sound tend to update relatively infrequently. Right. They like to update their forecast maybe once a month and they find it difficult to filter out these different uh, s signals, often with, with different directions. Indeed, even, even you overestimated. You obviously did a lot better than these conventional forecasts, but even yes. the actual outcomes yeah. seem to be even worse than Ex what you exactly. thought. These are quarterly numbers, so there's almost no growth at all. That's Let's right. see how the UK uh, looks, because even, your, even if your technique was better than the others for the US, it didn't pick up the surprising slowdown in the UK economy, which is what we see here. The red line here is your first quarter now cast, and we've also added in your now cast for the current quarter, the second quarter. Right. So tell that, us what's going on here. That's exactly right. So as you can see, the, the Q1 now cast um, drifted down over this, this period, and at the end we were, uh, we were just above 0 0.6, whereas the first official release from the Office of National Statistics came in at 0 0.3. So that was so a miss. See there. Yeah. Um, but uh, and, and if you look and you compare the red line for the first quarter with the blue line for the second quarter, you can see how it's been revised down, whereas the, the second quarter has remained 
remarkably stable. Stable despite two things, I would point out. Number one here, this jump down, that's actually the release of uh, the trade figures for January. And in particular, the imports figure for January was a big negative surprise right. for the model. So that's fine. So it revised down because that would clearly have an impact uh, that was clearly indicative of what was going on in Q1. But notice how small Very the, the impact on it your had on Q2. So, so what that tells you is that the model sees that as a non-persistent right. uh, right. event, if you like. Equally, the second one is GDP itself. When it right. comes out here... Everyone was surprised. In many other cases, with but the same model, model the, the model might have uh, adjusted its Q2 prediction down significantly in response to that, that, that number. The fact that it didn't suggests that the model, if you can give it a personality as right. it were, is, is confident that this was a blip. Thank you very much, Jasper, for walking us through that. So, some new, interesting, real-time knowledge about what's going on in the economy, but clearly there's still room for even further improvement.